Hey everybody, Gizmo here. Welcome to the channel. I've got my whiskey. Hopefully you've got your libation handy. Today we're going to be talking about a game that came out a couple years ago, but um, I really like it. And it's uh, interesting for me as a developer because it was done by one person. There's a single individual behind this game, Banished. And it is the only person involved. So all the music, the graphics, all of that stuff, it's all completely done by a single individual. It's all in Windows. So it is definitely a game that is, um, if you have a certain technology stack uh, available to you, then it becomes a lot easier to do that kind of thing. But I really wanted to get into what's going on with this game. Um, it's exciting, and I have some tips and some hints about how to play it if you're interested in take, pick, taking a pick at it, uh, taking a look at it rather. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. So uh, something I'm going to share here is I'm a descendant of one of the... Um, Actually, we'll, we'll do this, Salem Village. I'm a descendant of one of the original Salem witches. Um, so Susanna Martin was my ancestor. Um, and in 1692, she was hanged for being a witch. Uh, it's been kind of a thing of uh, not so much pride, but just really of, of, of interest and excitement to me and my family. Uh, for many years, uh, uh, all of my family has just been uh, really intrigued by that. So, so we're going to play Salem today. Uh, let's go ahead and start this game up. Um, and again, one of the things I love about this is how the graphics look, um, how they change over time. It's really, you know, in, in essence, a AAA game with one person in the development studio. So um, very excited about that. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this. And now we're going to bring up a bunch of stuff. So uh, what I do is I have um, a lot of things that I bring up. So here's my information docket about what the, uh, the, the village looks like. So you can see it's early spring. Um, I've got uh, 20 adults, I've got four kids. I have a whole bunch of stuff here. Um, now I haven't played this in a while, so this could be interesting to see uh, how this is gonna play out. But um, I've not done this in a bit. Okay, so let's do this. I'm gonna bring it by, let's see. Um, where is, oh wait, I need this guy. And I'm gonna move him over to here. All right, so now what I'm trying to do is create a, uh, a kind of a screen that's going to show me all the different aspects of the, the village as the game plays. So Banished is uh, a game designed for the uh, a city building in a way, but you're looking at a, a medieval village. So really it's your people have been banished from wherever they were and they are uh, coming into their, uh, their, their, new, their new space, their new home and um, you are the leader and your goal is to try to make it so that they can actually live here. So um, we gotta do a couple things. We gotta build some houses. Um, so I'm gonna do this. Um, I'm using R here to rotate this guy. Um, and I wanna make it, I'm gonna put this guy right there. I'm gonna him right next to him. And then I'm gonna rotate these guys over. Now, I'm kinda strange. I kinda like it when there are, there's uh, really just um, sort of two, um, spaces in between here, but today I'm going to go three because there's a reason. There's a reason for that that I will get into. So put that guy there, put that guy there. Um, I need to get the demographics though. So where's my demo graphics? Uh, let's see limits. Nope, not one limits. What I want are my. Oh, there's my event list. Your event log can be really handy just for kind of keeping track of what's going on. I'm gonna put that at the top. Um, so you actually get to see things. Uh, you'll get little pop-ups that show you what's been happening. Like, you know, hey, look, so-and-so was born or so-and-so died or, you know, we're running low on wood. Uh, but you can keep your event log up and that'll actually allow you to see those things and scroll back and forward and, and actually catch them because sometimes those things pop up and you don't see them. You really don't, don't have a chance to read them, um, which, and from a design perspective, it's perfectly reasonable. Um, you know, they don't want to spend a whole lot of time blocking the screen with this notification. At the same time, sometimes you need that information available. Okay, so now I need to get where my, um, what's the paths? I don't care about paths. I'm uh, looking for, and I might not have it here. Um, I was trying to figure out where my list of uh, workers was, but I'm I'm running I'm I'm again. It's been a while since I played, so we're gonna have to explore this again together. Like I said, I do have some tips and tricks from when I played this before. Um, I do want to share those with you. So um, one thing I do know we have to do is we have to do some food. So I'm gonna plant some crops here. 
we'll put some crops right here. Now there are some rules here. So um, the one rule that I've got is um, eight by seven uh, means you can um, run a, um, a field by yourself. So one uh, person can handle a, an eight by seven field by themselves. Um, it helps when you're, you're doing all your farming. Now you can always assign more people to a, to a field, um, but you can also may want to uh, do something different with that. Uh, the other thing is you can um, separate out um, your uh, different kinds of crops. You can put a space in between them. Sometimes that's really helpful, especially if you start expanding out in different areas. What you're going to see is uh, you might need to have uh, some uh, roads that are going to be able to take you back into town, back you back to the, the stockpiles, and you'll be able to get a little bit, you get there a little faster, um, or back to the barn, um, the storage uh, barn, so that you can actually see that stuff and then be able to, to get a feel for uh, what's actually there. So our storage barn, you can see we have some hide coats, we've got some iron tools and potatoes. Um, I'm not too worried about uh, this stuff right now. The hide coats, uh, when someone is born, they'll get a new one. Right now we have 24 people. Um, actually, no, we've got 14 people. So we've still got quite a lot of coat left. Uh, we will need to hire a tailor to get that done, but that's a, a year four, three to four kind of time frame. So we'll do that then. We also have iron tools. Uh, there's different kinds of tools. Uh, in this case, iron tools are the basic ones. Uh, steel tools are gonna be a lot uh, more a lot sturdier, that are going to be a lot more resilient, uh, and they're going to wear a lot less. Um, and then we have potatoes. So what we have for food is potatoes. That's it. So that's kind of uh, handy. But anyway, all right. So I'm going to assign some workers to this. But I'm trying to remember how to do that. And I am absolutely forgetting this. I apologize. I'm usually a little better prepared than this, but it has been a while since I've played. All right, let's see. No, no, no. It's one of the reports. I'm just trying to remember what it is. Do, 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 do. No, I am not seeing it. This is driving me nuts. Event log. Oh, that's the overhead map. That can be handy sometimes. Let's, ah, there it is, jobs. I'm just, I'm a little slow, but I get there. Okay. So, ooh, you can see here we have two different lakes. That's going to be really good when we get our fishing docks. Um, that is something that you can build, and that will increase the diversity of the food stuffs that are available in the barn. Um, more diversity means healthier citizens, which means less disease, less dying, or really that kind of stuff. So it can be really handy. Uh, right now we've got one right here. Um, so that's quite substantial. I'm just scrolling back here so you can see it. And then we can come down over here and there's another one. So we have two different areas that we can put uh, fishing uh, docks in when we get the chance. So excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, so here are our professions. Now, I need a couple of... Um, uh, where are they here? I need a couple of builders. All right there. Builder, 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 builder. This tells you how many you need in order to actually get all of the, the items you've got uh, constructed. So I'm going to go up to I'm going to go up to four for right now because I think four should be fine. Um, and then I'm going to grab a couple. I'm going to grab a farmer. I'm going to grab a couple of farmers because I'm going to add another field here. Now normally I recommend uh, putting a space between your fields just because again you can put that that road up in there and then that'll help it it'll help you um, get your um, uh, stuff back to the stockpile faster and actually here I have kind of screwed up in that I have not given us a space to get down the back side of these houses oops okay so let's fix that let's see remove structure I think I can do that here and I can just redraw this guy perfect yes all right so now, let's leave a space. So here we are. I'm going to move over one space. I am one space there. Excellent. All right. Eight by one. We're going to do eight by seven. Bam. Okay. And now we're going to come over here, leave one space, and go eight by seven again. Now, the nice thing about this is that if um, we uh, have anything that is going to um, get in our way, it's going to get identified. And then the people will come in and they'll remove it for us. So that uh, in order to get this field um, cleared out so that we can farm on it, then the, the villagers are going to have to come in and clear these trees out. All of that wood is going to go into our stockpile. So that's going to really help us out. All right. The big question I'm going to have is, do we have enough housing for the people we have? And I'm not going to know that until I hit play. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit play right now. 
and I'm not going to save this um, and then reload at all. What I'm going to do is I'm going to save it only in between the matches. Uh, so in between our videos here of, of me giving you some hints on this stuff. Oh, and one more thing I want to do, which is I want to create an orchard. Now, an orchard um, is a really handy piece of real estate. Um, and what I think I've got here is an orchard of 8 by 9 can be managed by one person. So uh, that's 5. Hmm, crap, that's not going to be big enough there. Okay, let's see. We're going to have to clear some more stuff. That's okay. It's all good, man. All right, so we are here. Let's see, there's the edge of that guy. Right, yep, there's the edge. I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna put this guy right um, next to this. So eight by nine. So there's eight by nine. And that's how much one um, uh, far, one villager can handle on their own. Now, orchards take a couple of years to build uh, and, and really get up to speed. So you wanna get it done as early as possible. If you're gonna build one, it really helps to build it early. The good thing about farms is that you'll get that immediately. So this year, you will get the fruits of that labor. Orchards take two years to get it, but then once you get it, it really helps. And then you can use that to make a variety of things. You can make liquor that you can sell at your tra trading house, which is the thing down the road. Um, and also just simply, you know, having apples or whatever in your orchard can be really handy. So, um, all right, there we go. And let's go ahead and unpause, and then we're gonna go through and see how this works. Let's find out. All right. And I'm going to speed this up to, let's do four, 5x for now. <laughs> so we can see how things go. I'll back out. And you can see here, it'll show you how many of any particular, uh, you know, so it says i got to remove uh, 13 trees. So I'm at 3 of 13 right now. So this one, um, oh, i got to assign, assign a, there's one, oh, hold on. Pause. Hold on. I have screwed something up here. Oh, there we go. Squash and corn. Perfect. All right. So now we've got um, our two guys. All right. I only. I should have two farmers. Yep. Okay. And then once that gets to eight or thirteen. All right. So we still got some people without homes. So I do need to build another house. Um, I also have four builders. I only need one. So um, I'm gonna drop this down to two. Anybody that you don't assign to a um, to a proper to a, a, a task will just simply be a regular worker. So that's kind of handy from that perspective, where you don't have to worry about uh, there being a lot of different um, uh, people who are in the sort of in the way. Uh, they're not sitting idle. They're actually doing a lot of other stuff. You can have them clear rocks or collect iron or get stone or whatever. Different materials are going to be used to create different things. All right, so I'm gonna put that house there. All right, and then I'm also going to build some roads. Okay. Put this road up here. I'm gonna put this road up here to here. And then, hold on a second. Ah, stop, okay. So then bring this guy up the side here. There we go. And then this guy out to here. Perfect. Okay. So now we've got a road going, and this will help us in terms of getting people in and out of the city um, as they move around. So the big thing here is we've got a couple people that don't have a house, so we may need to build more than one house, but we'll find out. Okay. Now you'll notice that some of the villagers are moving things from the stockpile into this area. Once you collect all the pieces that you need, for this one you need 16 logs and 8 stone, then your uh, builders can get in there and actually build that structure. And someone's taking a break. You can also track where your guys are, um, which is really handy. Okay, so now we have no people without housing, which is awesome. Okay, so everybody's got housing. And you can see here, we've got two people. Um, the interesting thing is that some of these people are really young, but you can kind of say, oh, well, it's the Middle Ages, but still. Anyway, um, between uh, if you have a school, then at 16, then they move out. Um, otherwise, it's uh, 12, I think that they, move, they can move out of the house. So if there's space available, if you create a, a house uh, and uh, it's empty, then uh, anybody above the age of 12 can move into that house. All right, I'm actually gonna slow this down a little bit um, and I'm gonna do, let's do chestnut there. Excellent, okay. And I need another farmer, I think. 
Yep, alright, one more farmer. Okay. There we go. Now it's telling me I need four farmers, but my experience has been that you don't really need four farmers. Um, I don't need more than a farmer for each of these things. Um, you can see here, these guys are starting to get out. They're um, this uh, particular um, orchard is starting, she's starting up. She's planting the trees, everything's going along. These guys, we've got our, uh, our crops, our corn going, we've got our squash going. So we're making some good progress here. Now it is only spring, and that's really important. So in um, fall, we will harvest. And actually, once it gets to 100%, we'll harvest it. The goal, though, is going to be do this as quickly as possible in your game so that you don't have a shortage when you get to winter. Because in wintertime, you're not going to be doing anything. Um, we might build a fishing dock at that point and then do some things there to get uh, some uh, fish coming into our, our process. But for now, I want to focus on just our um, uh, basic foodstuffs here um, with uh, crops. All right, here we go. Close that guy. So... Um, and that'll stay, like I said, so you see this yield here, um, it's showing a 0% yield. That'll stay there for two years. Um, these trees have to mature, and then they'll begin to produce fruit. At that point, we'll get those those nuts in order to situate. This is already at 16%, this is already at 36%, and we're still in spring. So we are doing really well here. All right. Now, how are we doing for our stuff? So we can see here in our stockpile, we've got 25 firewood. Okay, we are going to need a blacksmith. So our blacksmith is going to help us get um, our, let's see, where is he? I think he's up in the area, he's in here. We're going to need a forester, we're also going to need a blacksmith. So I like to put my blacksmiths next to my um, uh, stockpiles, just because it's easier for them to get their, to get the raw materials. And also when they make tools, they put those tools right back. It's, it's very quick for them to do that. So I'm going to put this right here. There we go. And then we've still got our two builders, which is great. Uh, all we need to do now is just uh, wait for the stuff to get get done. All right, I'm gonna speed this up a little bit again. The five X. I normally play at two X just because I like to have a little more control over these things than uh, five X gives you. At the same time, um, it's uh, I'm trying to really kind of uh, uh, demonstrate some of the things that we're talking about here. So um, it's almost more important to get that done than not. All right. Uh, oh, we need a wood cutter. So let's get a woodcutter. Um, now this, also, uh, this is someone who's going to be able to create firewood, which, of course, as you get closer to winter, is going to be critical. And I like to put them, also, um, right next to the um, stockpile. Now, I'm kind of blocking in my stockpile a little bit here. That's less than ideal, um, because I'm probably going to have to build a bigger one later. Um, you can build this, I could probably build a supplemental one over here, but I may want to actually build a, a whole different one, and then I can get rid of this one and reuse the space for something else. Um, but for now, I think what I'm going to do is, um, let's, let's harvest some stuff here. I want to remove Forest Lodge. Nope. Oh, here we are. Oh, nope. Hold on. A gatherer's hut. That's another one that we can look at. Um, it's going to be really handy to have a uh, gathering going on. The gatherer's hut will actually do some stuff where they will, uh, if you scroll back here, you can see all the areas it covers. It's actually really handy to have it um, away from your uh, crops, but sort of near your um, other structures, simply because um, you're going to have the ability to get a lot of stuff out of that. So, all right. Well, we are approaching the 20-minute mark. We have just started this, so it's late spring. Um, and I'm going to go ahead, and I think we're just going to go ahead and end this here right now for for, for a while. Um, we'll see what happens. It's telling us that the reserve of stone is low, reserve of iron is low. We need to fix that, um, and again, we'll get into uh, that in the next video. But I want to thank you so much for joining me on this first uh, inauguration for Salem Village. We'll see how that goes. But uh, anyway, uh, if you like this, please click the like button below. If you uh, want to get want to subscribe and uh, get updates on when I post new videos, please do. I'm going to be a lot more frequent about posting these things up. So, hey, anyway, cheers and have a great afternoon.